Oh hey, I got something to show you. I just finished this pedal and actually it's based around classic Big Muff circuit. I modified it a bit and added this uh, mid bus switch. Mm, so I want to show you the process, how it was built and uh, share some tips about it. Also, I decided to give away this pedal, so actually at the end of this video you will learn the rules how you can get it. So yeah, be sure to watch to the end. Okay, so to build a pedal you need of course schematics, bill of materials and of course parts and PCB board. Bill of materials is just a list of parts with numbers and you will find the same numbers on a PCB. Of course you will need some solder and soldering iron. And something to snap the legs after soldering. So first I suggest to solder smaller parts, so we will start with resistors. As you see, R0 is 1 mega. You need to find R0 on PCB, bend the legs, put them into holes and solder it. As you see I'm using here small piece of foam to keep parts in place when I'm soldering those. Because I don't want part to move or fall out from the holes. So I just gently pushing PCB to the foam when I'm soldering and everything is in place. As you see soldering process is pretty quick and actually I will tell more about this in a moment. So just solder it and snap the legs. And of course always remember to have a good ventilation because uh, smoke is very toxic. So we have a first resistor on our board. Now it's time for other resistors. I will speed up it right now but process is the same. Just check the number and value of part and then find the number on the PCB. So now I will tell more about solder and temperature. In this video I'm using solder with lead, it's easier to solder because it needs a lower temperature to melt. I use solder with lead for personal use uh, pedals or for repairs. Lead is very toxic, so actually it's restricted for commercial builds. So when I'm building pedals for sale I'm using leadless solder. I know some people have problem with soldering with that kind of solder, but actually you just need to heat up your soldering iron a little more and everything is pretty the same. So when I'm using solder with lead I usually go with 350-360 degrees of Celsius scale. And with leadless I usually use 380-390 and sometimes much more when I'm soldering big parts, for example like jacks. As you see I already soldered all resistors and diodes, so they are marked on a bill with D. The PCB is marked for silicon diodes, but actually I used LEDs here. Now I'm going to solder capacitors, they are marked as C. So actually the best rule is to solder smaller parts first and then bigger and bigger. It will help to keep all those parts in the right place. And as you see, foam is very useful here. Okay, so just a little more about temperature. So in my opinion, the best rule to set temperature is to set it low as you can to melt the solder in one, maximum two seconds. And remember, too high temperature and too long soldering can destroy parts or PCB. And it's a really good idea to use the thin solder, I use 0.5 millimeters. So actually try to set your temperature to match uh, the 1, 2, 3 row. So about 3 seconds. On the 1 I'm touching the pad with soldering iron to heat up the place. On 2 I'm touching it with solder and on 3 I'm taking everything away and it should be soldered. Of course it will not work with all scenarios, for example on that board I have a ground plan on the bottom side, so actually what that's mean? All space around traces, trace is just a connection between two parts, it's connected to ground, so actually when you're soldering uh, something to ground pin it needs a little bit more time because that ground plan taking some heat away much more than small parts. So for example when I'm soldering input and output jack I use up to 450 celsius. As you see board is almost completed, now it's time for potentiometers and switch. I like to use PCB mounted pods because it helps with mounting everything inside pedal and keeps everything tidy. As you see I placed uh, PCB with pods uh, before soldering into the enclosure. It prevents the bending PCB or any stress caused by soldering uh, potentiometer and switch a bit off. And as you see I'm soldering here a bit longer because parts have a bigger connectors and pads are bigger so it needs a bit more heat. So before I put a PCB into a right enclosure I'm mounting LED because it's much easier to connect it to the power without PCB. 
Now I'm tightening all nuts and I'm going to solder off board wiring. Don't worry, I will make a separate video for this. I will explain how foot switch works, how do you need to connect uh, input, output and of course board and LED. Always be sure to put enough pressure to tight those nuts because it's very important to keep this in place. You don't want anything to fall out, to, to break, to, to break the cables. So yeah, always be sure it's tight enough. And as you see, I like to use uh, solid wires because I can form them for any angle I need and everything looks really tidy. You will see in a moment. Also, I'd like to mention here that of course I will prepare also video about uh, preparing enclosure, about drilling, about measuring everything. So don't worry, I will cover that too. So yeah, just a little moment and it's done. Yeah, just need to put knobs on potentiometers and close the enclosure. So it's ready and now it's time to rock. Let's check it. So as I said, I would like to give away this pedal and actually rules are pretty simple. You just need to subscribe my channel, share this video and also leave a comment about what's the pedal you would like to build for your first project or if you're already building pedals, uh, what's the pedal you would like to build next? And I will pick one lucky comment when my channel will hit 300 subscribers. So good luck.